So almost ready to get underway. And today's starting pitcher, Bryce Miller. And Singy, he likes pitching at home. Well, truly for him, there is no place like home. He's been so dominant here. And as a teammate, you expect him when pitching at home this year to go out and dominate just as he has. The fans expect it. But I think everyone around here knows that he's a good pitcher. Even though we don't see the same splits on the road, we're going to start to see that translate as well. Kicks and deals. Ball. That one fouled off two and two. The pitch. Oh, and a swing and a miss. And one ball. Stood absolutely no chance on that slider right there. And I don't mean to laugh, but that's a tough one. I mean, pretty much a perfect strikeout pitch. I mean, it looks like a fastball middle in. Kind of has cutter action, and it just bunches you up to where you can't get your hands through and the barrel to it. And not much you can do unless you recognize the spin early and you spit on it. Here's Adley Rutschman. And a pitch. And now it's three and two. Battling here as he fouls it away. 3-2. Good plate appearance there. Able to take the walk. That is third. The first baseman. Ryan O'Hearn comes up to hit. Really chase that time. Rutschman, the base runner at first with one out. And the right hander deals. And that one is inside. Close pitch there, and he's kind of wondering where it missed. You know, getting a feel for each umpire's strike zone is something that pitchers and hitters really have to think about and work on from game to game and sometimes from a bat to a bat. Good job to fight that one off. Righty delivers. Foul. We'll see another payoff pitch. At the belt and fires. On the ground, a short could be two. Feed to second, that's one. And that's two. So they make short work of them there. So now the Mariners offense gets to go to work for the first time. We've got no score. Back at T-Mobile Park, today's starting pitcher, Dave Povich. Well, no doubt about it, he's going to have to put together some consistently good performances in order to bring that ERA down. Now, he's got good stuff. He's just got to be able to have confidence, trusted, and really go after hitters, not nibble. Trusted his stuff can have late life and miss barrels of bats. Here's a 1-1. Swing and a tapper that rolls foul. And now the lefty. High fly ball pretty well struck out towards right center. Mullins going back on this one. Pulls it in on the warning track. Now Scott Service lined up for the Seattle Mariners. They're dealing with a sinker specialist on the mound, which can be a big time challenge when he's right and working mostly from the knees down. Well, I think the approach you take is really try to lay off of those pitches down in the zone until he gets some called strikes and then forces you to go after that pitch. Until then, make him elevate it because guys that throw those sinkers, those two seamers, really hard for them to be effective up in the zone. Those are pitches you can hammer, but when you get a cookie, you don't want to miss it. And that one 
cutting but missing down low. One out, base is empty. Spoils that one and it remains two and two. And downstairs. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. Well, that was the cutter down and in right there. And typically, if you're going to have a chance with the pitch, if it's down, that's your best chance of doing anything with it. It's kind of like a mini slider, just with a little less vertical movement. But still, that one tied him up, but he couldn't get the barrel to it. The lefty fires. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And it's a three up, three down inning. Mariners are down in order. Scoreless after one. Back in Seattle, now at the plate, Anthony Santander. Not only can he hit the cover off the ball, he's got a great eye as well. And the pitch. Ball. That's off the mark. And that's ball three. Way to lay off that fastball up right there. You're looking for something you see well that you can handle, but you also ball have four. to keep the discipline so that you're not popping up pitches that are just a little too high. I don't think you really he wanted to pitch to him right there anyhow. The now here is Heston Kerstad. The pitch. That one blasted deep to right. That's back there. And that ball is gone. He circles the bases, and the Orioles jump out in front. It's 2-0. That's a fun way to take the lead. Just hit one out of the park. Almost robbed the home run right there, and I tell you what, he'd love another crack at it. During batting practice, you always like to work on that, and so close, but that one was just out of his reach. Now it's the second baseman, Jordan Westberg. Swing and a miss, and it's one and two. It can be tough to bounce back after a big home run, but nobody on, nobody out. You just have to treat it as a fresh inning. first out nice recovery after giving up the homer very frustrating right there as a speedy potential base runner when with two strikes you just struggle to put the ball in play you don't even have to get a hit at that point you can help your team just by reaching on an error but some way you got to find a way to shorten up the swing and put the ball in play next time and he takes it himself for the out Cedric Mullins two outs base is empty Cedric Mullins the next to hit Next offering in there for a strike. That is strike two. Instead of letting the hitter get his arms extended, tie them up a little bit, slightly up, slightly in. Foul ball left side. He'll see another. The next oh, offering misses, and the count's full. Really good take, especially with two strikes. That one is inside ball four, and I mean... Oh, so close. Well, he tried to nibble right there and just missed his spot. Hitter didn't offer at it. Now he has somebody to worry about over at first. Next to hit, Ramon Urias. Ah! And safe. One ball. It's a Two stolen shot. base. Man, it's second. Fouls it off, still one and two. And the pitch. Fights that one away, still one and two. Line drive. 
Grabs it on the run. And that is that. Baltimore with a two-run shot this inning. It's now a 2-0 ball game. It's Major League Baseball, and it's on the show. And we're back. We head to the bottom of the second. Mitch Garver up to it here. Garver. Well, after putting up a nice inning on offense, got some runs across, this is where you look for the starter to go out there, have a shutdown inning. Don't give that other team any hope. Oh, this one high and deep. Way back there. And out of here. He crushes that one to center field. His 11th of the year, it's 2-1. Took on the big part of the yard for that home run and just barely got it over the wall. I thought for a second he brought it back out there too. Gave it a great effort, but you know, those plays are so tough to pull off. And I'm sure he'd love to have another shot at it. And now for Seattle, Luke Rayleigh, Westberg. Throws the first in time. One away. That ground ball may have him back on track after the homer. That is the first baseman. And here's the first baseman, Ty France. The M's trailing by a run. Bottom half of inning number two. That one down the line. Jump throw. Awesome play there. That is tough. My goodness, Chris, he had to generate a ton of power in that jump throw for the out. Let's take another look and dive into the numbers from StatCast. Man, that's an impressive throw right there. In the air, all the way from third base. You've got to have a powerful arm to play third base, but he just showed he's got more than enough. He's got a cannon. The batter now, Jorge Polanco. Check swing, no appeal. Two down, nobody on. Hard ground ball, base now. Not much to this one other than just a willingness to go the other way and put the ball in play. That's a team to bat right there. Nice job of staying back and letting the ball get deep. Now batting Mitch Hanniger. the corner. It's a good change up to hit up in the zone. I don't think he recognized it. I'm sure he'd love to have that one back. Swing and a miss and that is that. So they pick up a run on two hits. No errors and a man left. We head on now to the top of the third. It's the Orioles two and the Mariners one. Back at T-Mobile Park, top half of the third inning, and now the shortstop, Gunnar Henderson. That one lined softly the other way. It'll fall into left field for a base hit. Man aboard on the leadoff single. Didn't exactly square that one up, but sometimes you don't have to. There are a lot of nicknames people have attached to hits like that. Blooper, Flair, Duck Snort, Lawn Dart, etc. But whatever you want to call it, it's a knot. And those are the ones that will make you smile as a hitter just about every time. And now they've got some speed on first, so we'll see if they try to get him into motion. And now it's going to be swings through it, and that's a strikeout. Save that mid-90s fastball until the final pitch of the at-bat, so at the plate, he hadn't really had a good opportunity to time things up. By the time the pitch was recognized and the swing came through the zone, fastball was in the catcher's mitt. 
so next to him for Baltimore Ryan O'Hearn now moved to first He's Henderson good. back in on a dive though Chris through the early stages he hasn't been very efficient in terms of the pitch count he's going to need to get some quick outs if he's going to get deeper into this game good eye right there it is interesting though when you consider the way the game is run now doesn't even matter that much if your starter doesn't go that deep because teams are really aggressively building their bullpens and now it's even up Stays alive. Henderson leads off first with one away. Right hander kicks deals. Ball three. So okay. here we go. Base runner at first could be running on the pitch. He's got good enough speed to steal the bag to get in scoring position, even if it's a swing and miss at the plate. <laughs> Swings and misses struck him out. Oh, interesting. He's looking very comfortable out of the stretch after giving up the leadoff single. Back-to-back -back strikeouts, so they haven't been able to move that runner up, get him into scoring position, and try to have a better chance of scoring. I tell you, good job so far on the mound. He just needs one more out. Anthony Santander at the plate. The 1-1. One, one. Runner on the go. Pitch misses. Throw to second. Out at second. That ends the inning. Well, trying to get in the scoring position, but a great catch and throw to end the inning. That's the way to pick up the pitcher. Ready to go for the last go. half of the Mariners. inning. And stepping in for the Mariners, the Josh time. Rojas. And a pitch. On the ground, right side. Rutschman fires over to first. One gone, bottom of the third inning. Number three, shortstop, J.P. J.P. Crawford up next for the Mariners. Grounder off the pitcher. No chance for a play, and let's hope the left-handers not hurt out there. Well, that ball came back and got him pretty good in the chest. As the catcher checks on him, looks like he might be okay, though, Chris. Yeah, I'm sure that stunned him more than anything, Boog. Always scary when we see comebackers like that, but I think it might just turn into a big, nasty bruise. One gone runner at first, and now it's Julio Rodriguez. Ball to strike, the pitch. And a swing and a line drive at a right field. Kerstad makes the grab. Cal Raleigh up next for the Mariners. Two outs. Smoked on the ground a second. On to O'Hearn. And that is the inning. One left for Seattle. And they trail it here. Two to one. As we go to the top of the fourth, here's a big power threat. Anthony Santander. Santander. And a 1 1. And a foul ball. And a foul ball. He stays alive. The 1 2. Spoils the two strike pitch and he'll see another. And a base hit. So a runner aboard to start the inning. 
Well, that'll make you feel good as a hitter right there. Fastball pretty much middle-middle, and that's what you fall asleep dreaming about as a hitter. So no surprise he put a great swing on it. Heston Kerstad now at the plate. Left-hand batter waits. Comes up empty. That's strike two. Santander aboard here at first with nobody out. And here it comes. Towards first. Slings to second. Return throw. Gets him at first. It's a 3-6-1 double play. The 3-6-1 double play, in my opinion, is one of the toughest plays to make. You've got a pitcher covering first, and the middle infielder throwing to a moving target. Everything has to be perfect, and right there, they made it look pretty easy. Here's the second baseman, Jordan Westberg. Top of the zone for a called strike. He's pitching well, but not throwing a ton of first pitch strikes. Usually doesn't work out for success, but you can never predict baseball. Two down, nobody on. And a miss, struck him out. And a nice inning of work there as he sets him down. One, two, three. And welcome back to the ballpark. Here's the catcher, Mitch Garver. Here comes a pitch. And a foul ball left side. He's been pitching well, but we'll see what kind of adjustment the hitters make this second time through the order. We'll know if he's got really good stuff in this one or not. Got him swinging. The left field, number 20. Luke Raley up next for the Mariners. Home team down a run. We're here in the bottom of the fourth. Next offering is in for a strike. One ball, two strikes. Swings and misses. Slider got him for strike three. Well, that slider was way out of the zone. And for me, it just comes down to not seeing the pitch out of the hand, not tracking it into the zone, and then also being a little bit anxious, not confident in your two-strike approach. And so when a guy's in that position, you get him to commit early, and a lot of times you get the swing and miss, as you did right there. Ty France digs in now. And a swing and a miss. One, two. center field and that extends the inning I could watch base hits like that one all day long and so could every hitting coach in the league just a nice line drive into center field Jorge Polanco up next for the Mariners two outs and there's a foul ball Next offering is down low. Two balls, two strikes. Hits and misses. It's a strikeout. Mariners leave one. They're down two to one. Back in Seattle, and here is Colton Kowser. The 1-1. One, one. Double barreled action in the bullpen. George Kirby appears to be getting ready. And I'm sure he's feeling some nerves. This would be his major league debut. Bizarro also throwing. Way outside. Three and one. 
first pitch strike from the pitcher but then no panic at all by the hitter very patient showing good discipline now he's in the driver's seat with a 3 1 count and he grounds one to the right side Polanco tosses the first one away here in the fifth now Cedric Mullins Cedric Mullins will hit next just missed that's a really good take right there slider down and in very difficult to get on the same plane and do anything with foul ball base is empty one away and we're at the top of the fifth Not even close there. And it's three and two. Hit hard on the ground is short. Crawford throws the first in time. He made the pitcher earn that out after a long at bat. Ramon Urias. Ramon Urias, the next to hit for the Orioles. The one one gets the slider in there for a strike. Well, just about to hit that century mark. A hundred pitches for this game. Two out spaces empty. Okay. And the one two misses to even the count. Just missed. Payoff okay. pitch. And they'll do it again. Two down, nobody on. Swing and a drive, deep right field. That one's back. See you later. So he blasts one out the other way. Home run number five on the season, and they add on. It's 3-1. He kept swinging, and it paid off. Well, that was a battle, Boog, again. he just kept taking his cuts. Finally squared one up. His bat looks like it's in the zone for such a long time, and that gives him the ability to get barrel on it and hit the ball out to any part of the park. Back to the top of the lineup, Gunnar Henderson, the next to hit for the Orioles. That one ripped, but foul. Really great change of speeds. He goes off the off speed to the fastball, and the hitter doesn't know what's coming next. Ball. That misses, and the count's Ball's full. Down. Adley Rutschman. Waiting on deck for the Orioles. Oh, and a swing and a miss. And that's that. <laughs> Orioles add one on a solo homer. It's now a 3-1 ball game. We head to the bottom of the fifth. And now for Seattle, Mitch Hanniger. The wind and the pitch. Check swing. He went too far, and it's a strike. That one ripped. Way back there. And it hits the base of the wall. Throws to second. And that's a leadoff double. Put a pretty good swing on that one as he drove it out to deep left. Didn't quite have the right combination of launch angle and exit velocity to get it over the fence, but you're never going to be disappointed with extra bases. Here's Josh Rojas.
Man at second. And another ball. Well, these Mariners just lacking discipline at the plate in this ball game. Chasing pitches has been a big part of the story. We've seen it quite a bit today. It's been tough for them to make contact at times, and it just doesn't look like they're seeing it very well as a group. Rip to first, caught. Throw not in time as he's able to get back to avoid the double play. Well, that had RBI knock written all over it. Put a great swing on it, but a nice job on the infield to react and bring it down. Back to the top of the Seattle order. Here's the Mariners' leadoff man, J.P. Crawford. And on the mound, you know confidence has to be pretty high with all of the swings and misses. He's had him eaten out of the palm of his hand pretty much all game. Left-hand hitter waits. It's a hitter. You don't know what to expect here in the 3-2. If he'll throw a breaking ball 3-1, he'll do it again 3-2. Outside, and that is ball four. He's making things difficult for himself right now out there on the mound, but, you know, his confidence should still be high enough to get out of this, but he's going to have to buckle down right here. And now the center fielder, Julio Rodriguez. Two on, one out. This one popped up. Try to get to it. Drops into the glove. Just pulled off of it a little bit right there. That front shoulder coming open instead of staying closed. If he does that, he's going to be able to go up the middle the other way with some authority instead of a fly out to left. Cal Raleigh, the next to hit. Hanniger at second. Crawford at first. Two out of the inning. Right side, hard hit. And the inning is over. Mariners leave a couple, and it remains a 3-1 ball game. We're back, and they make a change to start the sixth. The new pitcher, George Kirby. Pretty tight game, so they're Number looking for quality eight. pitches out of him right sure. here. Got to do his best to keep the score right where it is. Adley Rutschman, the next to hit for the Orioles. The why to kick the pitch. Fought off foul. Kicks and fires. Swing and a miss for the strikeout. Gassed it right by him. Well, when you commit to throwing an inside fastball to your glove side across the strike zone, especially with two strikes, if you're going to miss, you want to miss off the plate in. You do not want to leave it out over the heart of the plate. So that was excellent execution on that pitch. Really tied him up, and he couldn't get a piece at all. The 1-1 one -one is fouled off. The wind of the pitch. And that just misses. It's a good take. The wind of the pitch. In the oh, dirt. Wow. And the count is filled up. Knocks that one away, and we'll do it again. One down, base is empty. Goes down looking for the strikeout. He's got to be frustrated with that call. Wow, that's a tough call for the hitter, but the pitcher will take that all day long. Not quite in the strike zone, but he found a spot that the umpire is going to at least for now allow him to get that call so hitters are going to have to make an adjustment but pitchers are going to learn from those things and really try to exploit them if they can and here is Anthony Santander oh. and that's off the inside two, edge two. it's two and two oh he never moved because he never had time to but that kind of velocity you'd prefer that pitcher work away And he deals. 
That's the ball. Full count. down in order. Impeccable command in that one. Three batters, three strikeouts. That's electric stuff out there on the mound. Back now for the bottom of the sixth, and there's a new pitcher on the mound, Dylan Tate. And this is an important part of this game. Tight score and still a lot of outs to get, so they're looking for a big outing out of him right here to get some critical outs. up the middle over to first leadoff man retired in the sixth the left fielder, number 20, Luke, Rayleigh. Luke Rayleigh up next for the Mariners the Mariners trailing by two here in the bottom of the sixth wouldn't chase that time Movement in the bullpen. Nick Vespi is up and throwing for Brandon Hyde. Aiken getting cranked up as well. Two balls and a strike. Here it comes. And a foul ball. Pretty good pitch there to take a rip at. He wants to get his arms extended. He likes the ball away from him a little bit. Just not able to square it up. Chases that one and two away now. Man, it's so difficult as a hitter to get on plane with that pitch. It's breaking down and in, and you've got to find a way to match the plane. And if it's nasty like that one, bite at the end. Most times you're swinging over the top and walking back to the dugout. Ty France getting ready to hit. pitch still two and two after the foul ball two outs hard grounder into the outfield for a knock a couple of hits in a row for him here really nice job staying up the middle with his approach he didn't try to do too much with the pitch just shot it through the infield so digging in, Jorge Polanco. The 1-1. One -one. And he hits a ground ball right side. They get the force. Gets him easily, ends the inning. One left for Seattle. Score holds. It's 3-1. Welcome back. We're in the seventh. We have a new pitcher on the mound, Taylor Saucedo. Well, he's been a really tough guy to take deep this season. You usually have to string some hits together in order to get to him. So digging in, Heston Kerstad. The right fielder. The lefty ready and a 1-1. There's the swing and a miss. The pitch started in and ended up on the outside edge, just changing planes and very difficult, especially for a left-handed hitter to track. Not sure about that call. Pitcher might have gotten a friendly strike three. And now Jordan Westberg. Here's a 1-1. Sharp grounder. That's through for a base hit. 
So they get a man aboard with a one out single. Everything came together perfectly for him right there. Wasn't able to elevate that one, but he sure hit it hard enough to get through the infield. There's not a whole lot of time for the defenders to react and try to make a play when it's ripped like that. One down. Now here is Colton Kaiser. Throws it away. Tag, and they got him. So an error on the play, but they get the out anyway. That one the other way, and makes the play, and that's out number three. We're back in a new picture here to start the bottom of the seventh. Keegan Aiken. These are the spots where levers really make a name for themselves. Late and close. There's not much margin for error, but at the same time, there's a reason they're put in these situations. Kicks and deals. Fouled off. He was late. And a pitch. And another ball. Swing and a miss struck him out. A big first out here in the seventh via the punch out. Yeah, it just does so much to change the outlook of an important inning like this. When you got the leadoff hitter so critical in setting the table when you got a tight game like this. So a strikeout really puts them on their heels. Josh Rojas up next for the Mariners. Line drive, and that should be extra bases. Now he'll turn for second. And he'll pull in there with a stand-up double. Everything came together for him. Just a solid swing right there. Caught it out front and ripped it into the outfield for the base hit. Those always feel great. Here's the shortstop at the play. J.P. Crawford. Tying run at the play. A little out front there as he swings through it. This one in the air. He's under it. And there's two down. That was a good pitch to hit right down the heart of the plate. Had pretty good timing on it. Just got underneath it a little bit and popped it up. And up next for Seattle, Julio Rodriguez. The tying run at the plate. He swings and hits a fly ball, center field. He's got it, and that'll end the inning. Mariners lead one, and they still trail it here, three to one. And we're back. We're at the top of the eighth. Here's the center fielder, Cedric Mullins. Cedric Mullins. And now the lefty. 2-1. Sliced hard but foul. Two two now. That one is absolutely belted. Hanniger raging back towards the wall, and that one is gone. Home run number ten on the year. It's four one. That's their third home run of the game. They're having a lot of fun at the plate in this one. They've got the long ball working for them on autopilot. Knew what pitch he wanted to hit. Spit on some other pitches in this. At bat was very patient, and it paid off. New pitch.
catcher for the Mariners, Edward Bizzardo. And we all know about his slider. It's just filthy, man. And one of the better ones in the game, I'd say. Spin rate's very high, and it just breaks a ton. Now the third baseman, Ramon Urias. Next offering is in for a strike. One run across in the frame so far, and we're at the top of the eighth. And that one almost hit him. Foul ball, another 2 2 upcoming. In the air, out towards left center. That one gets down for a hit. And that turns the lineup over. Hooked around that pitch on the outside, but he was still able to square it up pretty nicely. And that takes quick, strong wrist to pull that off. So back to the top of the Orioles lineup. Now it's the shortstop, Gunnar Henderson. With the big bats coming up and a home run already surrendered, he's really going to have to execute against these next couple of batters. Ball next three. offering is downstairs. Action Ball in the down. bullpen for Seattle. Ryan Stanek appears to be getting loose. Thornton also getting ready. So now three and two, and there's ball, ball four. four. Take your base. base knock, and now a free pass. This has now the makings of a big yeah. inning if they can get a couple Adley. more quality at bats. Rutschman. And next for the Orioles, Adley Rutschman. No outs, runners at first and second. Righty deals. Lifted in the air down the left side. Rayleigh puts it away. Now Ryan. And into the box for Baltimore. Ryan O'Hearn. And he chases a high fastball there. He can live up in the zone all game if hitters will chase it. That's just too much velocity. Hitters got to look down in the zone. Two on, one out. Got him swinging. Two gone. Third time he struck out in this one, and definitely an individual performance you want to flush. He just hasn't looked very comfortable up there. Just one of those days. But when you're still winning the ball game, at least you can focus on doing your part to maintain that lead and getting that W. And next is the designated hitter, Anthony Santander. Two on, two outs. And that one fouled off. Well, he got challenged with a good fastball right there. Just couldn't catch up. The one-two. Oh, he hit him. And that got him pretty flush. He had him one-two, and he ends up hitting him with a pitch. Two out spaces loaded. Digging in, Heston Kerstad. That one misses. And the count is three and one. Get ready for some action here. Good RBI guy at the plate. Runners in scoring position. And a hitter's count. And a pitch. And that gets the top of the zone for a strike. Ball four. And a run comes in to score. He's really gotten himself into a mess out there and now forces home a run with the wall. This inning's definitely getting away from him. Two outs, bases full. Jordan Westberg, the next to hit for the Orioles. Henderson on third. Santander on second. Kerstad on at first with two down. 
And that's downstairs and outside. Look, in situations like these, the air can get really thin up there at the plate. Got to find a way to breathe and slow everything down. Slapped foul. The pitch. Here's a high chopper. Rojas. They take the force out. They limit the damage here. Two runs in the inning, but they strand three. Last half of the eighth coming up. It's the Orioles five and the Mariners one. Back now, new pitcher on the mound as we roll into the bottom of the eighth, Nick Vespi. And he's got a nice lead to work with, so he should come in throwing strikes, attacking these hitters. Three, four, five, due up for the home team. Cal Raleigh now at the plate. The lefty fires. So a foul ball makes it one and two. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. The one, two. That one drifts inside. Action in the pen down there. CNL Perez is up and throwing for Brandon Hyde. Fights it off. He'll see another. And here it comes. Spoils that one, and it remains two and two. Here comes a pitch. And there's a ball. Swings and misses. He battled for a long time, but it finishes with a strikeout. You can't be mad at yourself after an at-bat like that one. Mitch Garver up next for the Mariners. Garver. One down, base is empty. Oh. Too low, and it's ball three. Oh. Way out front for strike two. Look out. And he walked That's him. Ball. Take your base. It's tough after falling behind a hitter, two balls and no strikes, but now at least he gets a fresh start against a new batter, but he needs to get back into the strike zone and start pitching with conviction. Now these guys definitely looking for a big swing of the bat right here. Try to close that gap, but you know, at the very least, if you could find a way to manufacture that run from first, it feels like it's... Urias fires to second for one, but safe at first. It's a fielder's choice. And now the first baseman, Ty France. Up the middle. On to O'Hearn. Third out. It's the top of the night, and there's a new pitcher on the mound, Trent Thornton. Well, he's been excellent against left-handed hitters this year, and that's his first test. This looks like a good move to the pin in terms of the matchup. So digging in, Colton Kowser. The left fielder, Colton Kowser. Here's a 1-1. Lifted in the air out to left. And it falls. And the leadoff man aboard. 
Anything but pretty right there, but he'll take it every time. That's a ball that a lot of times you'll see the shortstop or left fielder be able to get to if it hangs up in the air long enough. But right there, it just died and found a way to drop in on the green stuff, a base hit. Now a chance for Cedric Mullins. Swings through the fastball up in the zone. Squirts away a little bit. Low throw, and he can't take it out. So a wild pitch allows the runner to advance. Well, that's part of the risk when you throw a breaking ball in the dirt. Even as good as catchers are these days at blocking pitches, that one just got away enough, and that takes the double play opportunity away for now. That's in the dirt. Runner in scoring position. Nobody out. Here at the top of the ninth. Swing and a miss. And he struck him out. And a strikeout for the first out here in the ninth. Bird gets talked about a lot, but a good high fastball in a two-strike situation, it's just become such a problem for hitters in more recent years. But with all of the emphasis by pitchers on developing that spin rate, having a good grip on the baseball, those high fastballs, they kind of look like to the hitter that they're rising, even though they're not, but they're not decreasing in velocity and spin rate. So very difficult to get the barrel on it. On to France. And they got him. Here's the Orioles leadoff hitter, Gunnar Henderson. Gunnar Henderson. Man on second, two down. Ball, and it's no. even up. The pitch. That okay. one misses. Three and two now. Adley Rutschman next to bat for Baltimore. And the right-hander deals. That's the third, and it's through for a hit. Around third, throws to second. The tag, out. But one run does score on the play before the inning ends. So they get one run on two base hits. No errors, and nobody left on. Bottom part of the order, 7-8-9, two up in inning number nine. It's the Orioles six, and the Mar Back now as they hand the ball to a fresh arm to start the bottom of the night. CNL Perez. And you know, bullpen guys can struggle sometimes when they're called upon with big leads because it just doesn't have the same intensity as a tight game. So we'll see how sharp he is. Your mental toughness matters in situations like this as well. And now Jorge Polanco. And another ball. Two balls, one strike. The 2 1. Tap of the zone, and it's called a strike. Definitely not a pitch location you're expecting up there as a hitter when you know the guy's got a good sinker ball. If he can get in that location, boy, you've got to look top to bottom, and that's going to make it very difficult to hit. Well, that event seemed to be over as soon as it started. Three pitch strikeout. You've got to be better at the plate right there, at least to foul something off, extend that at bat. He's two outs away. Now it's the right fielder, Mitch Hanniger. And a pitch. This is the zone, and he gets him to chase. One ball, two strikes.
Here's a one-two. Swing and a miss, and he is down on strikes 